So we've got to talk about the Draymond Green problem. He's now been ejected from three games this year. One of them cost him a five-game suspension. And based on his history, he was extremely lucky it wasn't longer. His luck ran out today as he got suspended indefinitely. And I'd say it will last somewhere between 20 to 25 games after he karate chopped Yusuf Nurkic last night in the third quarter. But how vital is Draymond Green to the team anyway? Check his advanced on-off numbers and you'll see he has the second worst impact on the team overall next to only the dreaded play of Andrew Wiggins. While he still throws nice dimes and was hitting a crazy for him 43% from three-point land, the never-ending clips of his awful turnovers and fouls represents exactly what's wrong with this team. That said, taking a starter of his stature out of the lineup for a ton of games most likely causes the Warriors to miss the playoffs. Against Phoenix, the Warriors couldn't get anything going until Draymond went to the bench when they went on a 31-13 run to take control. In the third, Kerr altered his lineup dramatically, which meant Nurkic had to guard Green, and that's when we got some kung fu fighting. Nurkic might be grabbing a jersey a little, but his hand is empty when it appears here, and then he might pinch a little more than an inch around the love handles. So, Dre spins and nails him right in the jaw with a forearm jolt. Draymond tried to explain it after the game. Uh, he was pulling my hip, and I was swinging away to sell the call, made contact with him. I do apologize to you, sir. Because I didn't intend to hit him. Okay, so it looks like he's looking right at the ref before he throws the right arm into Nurkic's grill, but this is all part of the Draymond problem. He has a long history of wild flails that might be explained as accidental taken individually, but at this point, the league has to be worried about the safety of the Warriors' opponents every time he gets on the court. We're all old enough to remember last month when he had a chokehold on Rudy that had some premeditated qualities to it based on their past. And the greatest hits of Green's career are bangers, with emphasis on the word hit. And that culminated a few years ago with Steve Kerr getting caught on camera saying, I'm so fucking tired of Draymond shit. And that brings us to their 10-13 and 13 record. Since the merger, only 38 teams have made it to the playoffs after winning 10 of their first 23. And with one of their starters out for a long while, this most likely prevents Curry and company from seeing the postseason this year. What are the issues? Coach Kerr says it pretty succinctly. They had turnovers and fouls. That's, I can just repeat it every game if you want. I mean, it's turnovers and fouls. That's what it comes down to. Just looking at their win-loss splits, you can see a big difference in fouls per 100 possessions, so that's one thing. But what kills you are the shooting fouls, where they're sending their opponents to the free throw line more than all but three other teams in the league. I went through a ton of their fouls, and a distinct pattern emerged. They try to wall up and use verticality a lot, but they're not effective as they should be with this method. The idea is to be square to the opponent with both hands up over their head to show the refs that they're not reaching or initiating contact. The rules do allow for contact if they achieve legal guarding position. However, they routinely are not squared up to the shooter, and one of their hands invariably comes down and causes contact in some manner. Dario Saric has been the lane protector in the minutes he's out there and has struggled mightily to avoid fouling on these types of plays. But this is a team-wide issue with plenty of evidence across the whole roster to indicate they should get on the practice court and work on this technique a lot more. Without proper anticipation and early reaction time, it's easy to see how all of these are simple fouls that the referee doesn't have to think too hard on before blowing the whistle. Currently, the Warriors have four players in the top 24 of fouls per minute, while only the Suns in the Western Conference have as many as two. Jonathan Kaminga continues to drive coaches crazy with his mistakes on both ends, and you'd like to expect more from a third-year player. Draymond is falling at a higher rate than we've seen from him in 10 years, and it could be a combination of referees keeping very close tabs on his actions because, well, he's Draymond, and the fact that he's older and slower means he can't get to those spots as quickly, culminating in the least smart foul I've ever seen him make when the Warriors were up three with under 10 seconds to go. It got OKC to overtime, where they won going away. But that might be okay with you since you might have played prize picks and picked the over on Chet scoring that night. With prize picks, you're only competing with yourself and you can choose two or more players from any sport. Pick more or less on their projected stats and place your entry. Go to prizepicks.com slash CLNS and use code CLNS for a first deposit match up to $100. The cool thing is you can choose a ton of different stats, like that thing that happens when you throw the ball to the other team. And when you think of turnovers, you have to think Warriors. This has plagued them for the entirety of Steve Kerr's tenure. And one could argue that a team that passes as much as the Warriors would naturally turn it over a lot. And if you look at the win-loss split, the difference isn't that significant. But we have to analyze the live ball turnovers since those are the ones that are going to kill you. 
This gap is a little bit wider and also is reflected in points off of turnovers. There really isn't any one person to single out, and when they start happening, the team gets hot in a bad way, as they've already had three games with 20 or more turnovers. Their bread and butter is the low post split, and they'll experience a collective brain freeze and just throw the basic post entry pass away. But I still don't think these are the plays that are leading to the losses, as they've been able to overcome this collective nonsense for years without it hurting them. I think the one area that allows them to overcome so many boneheaded miscues is their three-point shooting. Their three-point differential this year is plus 2.8, a steep drop from their plus 3.7 a year ago, and it's keeping these games a lot closer than you'd think. You have to imagine Clay will continue to warm up and shoot closer to his career average, and that goes for Chris Paul too. Wiggins has been terrible all around, and especially from behind the arc. If those three get their acts together, expect to see them squeeze out some more wins. And while I said earlier that the loss of Draymond might be too profound to overcome, there is evidence that he hasn't been helping them as much as in years past. Kerr might have found something with Sharich at center since Kevon Looney really clogs things up with his non-shooting self. CP3 sets him up nicely in the pick and pop, something Looney cannot do. With Curry and Paul in the backcourt and Charles at center, look how open the lane is, and Eubanks doesn't want to leave his man till it's too late to contest. With three shooters alongside Chris Paul, he'll be sure to find the ones that are open, and it lets him push the ball up and dissect the defense until he gets the exact shot he wants. This five-man lineup has been excellent for them in four games, so they should explore this more as Sharrett pulls out their center far from the lane, and Clay will take all the focus in the pin down, enabling a wide-open rim for CP3 to just loft it up there and Kaminga to do the rest. So it's possible Coach Kerr can unlock more spacing in his lineups with Sharich there. That can, in turn, spark something they've been missing so far. And perhaps the Warriors have had enough with the Draymond Green experience. His excessive fouling, screaming at the refs, technical fouls, and suspensions take a toll on team morale without question. His minutes had been quietly reduced significantly this year. And by the time he comes back, this team might be so completely different they won't need him.